here on the air in The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin of reports observing several explosions of incandescent gas occurring at regular intervals on the planet. It's reported Mars. that at 8.50 p.m., a huge flaming object, believed to be a meteorite, fell on a farm in the neighborhood and of Grover Mill, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a announcement to make. Those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army Citizens from the planet of the nation. I shall not try to conceal the gravity of the situation. The spreading faster is from the Times Square. People are trying to run away from it, but it's no use. They, they're falling like flies. People were yelling in the streets, the world is coming to an end. The world, the, we're being attacked by Mars. They were getting into their cars and driving towards the George Washington Bridge, trying to escape a Martian invasion. Can you believe it? But I remember running in the street because we saw everybody else out in the street. It would strain. You would think the credulity of a of a twelve year old. People just were so naive at the time that they thought, "Good heavens, this is true." It was out of control. The whole thing was scary. You know, those uh, memories I've got from some of the the old time radio veterans were just precious. They were so kind with their time, and those memories they, they these these memories are seventy years ago, and they're still very vivid to them. And then, of course, voices frighten us with the lessons learned from the War of the World. And just doing this regular radio show, trying to find a way to adapt this H.G. Wells uh, classic. And there were, there were unintended consequences. And uh, why not do it on Halloween night, 1938, right? <laughs> Says she knew he was jamming through the floor Looks around with disgust on her face This room is an absolute disgrace Listen, I'm gonna say it once Clean up this funky space
We now return you to your regular scheduled program. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, this is Now Man, and I am at the location of at least 100 films and TV show episodes over a 100-year period in the Hollywood Hills. This is actually called the Bronson Cave, named after a street that's not too far away. And uh, it's actually the namesake of a famous actor who, when he came to Hollywood as a young man, he saw the street and he said, hey, Bronson. That's going to be my show business name. Anyway, that's another side story. But this is the Bronson Cave. It, uh, in the early part of the 20th century, it actually was a quarry. And it was all dynamited out and all of that. And a lot of the, the stone here was used to build foundations in the, in the uh, Hollywood homes that are literally just probably within miles of this area where we are right now. But in 1919, the film industry decided they wanted to start shooting films here, and they have, so far, up through uh, the 2010s. So pretty remarkable. Uh, it's most known as the Batcave because this is the original location where the Batmobile drove out of at the, in the beginning scenes of the Batman TV series with Adam West and Burt Ward in the 1960s. But there's so much more here. I mean, all the Star Trek uh, television series were shot here in, at one time or another from the original series up through Enterprise. Even the one of the Star Trek movies, original movies, uh, called The Undiscovered Country. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. But it's an interesting story here uh, that still continues on, and it's in a location that is only really maybe a couple miles away from a lot of people, tourists and all that on Hollywood Boulevard and Highland and Vine and... And it's just amazing that it's so quiet and we're so close to a big city and we're technically in a big city. So if you're ever in Hollywood, uh, this is a, a must-see if you're into film locations and just something cool and you can even hike up to the Hollywood sign from here. This, this hike here actually is only about a quarter of a mile. So uh, it's at the very furthest southwest side of Griffith Park so you can Google that, you can do all that kind of stuff, and uh, it's a great time for all. And, uh, and speaking of the Hollywood sign, there's a great view of it from this location as well. It's so beautiful here to look directly at the mountainside, and technically these are part of the Santa Monica Mountains. And you'll see all sorts of nature here at various times. I've seen deer actually walking through here, and a coyote, and... There's lots of birds and all sorts of interesting types of wildlife that we share this space with. Now this is called the Bat Cave, but you're not going to find any living bats here. <laughs> Hello, this is Nice Wander, and I'm in front of the Dearly Departed Tours in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard, and we're going to talk to the founder, Scott Michaels, right now. I am here in Hollywood at the Dearly Departed Tours with founder Scott Michaels. How are you, Scott? Thank you for being on the Now Man Show. Thanks for asking. Oh, this is fantastic. Now, you have been doing these really odd tours of all sorts around the Hollywood area since the 1990s. Is that correct? That's right. I came here in 94 to take over uh, uh, the old Graveline tour, where you host the old Cadillac Hearses. And uh, yeah, that's why I moved to L.A. And so you've been doing Dearly Departed tours now since uh, 2005? That's right. We started. I started this company. Our first tour was January 1st, 2005. Yes, we made it 10 years. God. Scott, what made you want to get in this kind of business? I've been fascinated with this sort of dark side of Hollywood since I was a kid. I've always been sort of exposed to death. I, I've seen it from a really young age, not in a dramatic way, but I've, I've, I've seen dead people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it just never really bothered me that much. In fact, it fascinated me. So uh, when I heard about the Graveline tour, and I thought, well, that's fantastic. That's, that's what I want to do, because to me, these are historic things. And I've assembled what I think people should see. 
I say I, anything I do, any tour I offer, anything I sell in my shop, anything I show in my shop are things that interest me, things that I would buy, things that I would do. So it's it's sort of that's how I judge it. It's probably a very selfish way to do it, but but it makes me believe in what I what I offer. Uh, fantastic. But what there's different types of tours that you do do though. Uh, let's run those down. Can you run those down for me real quick? Well, our, our standard dearly departed tour, which is what we we're, we're pretty well known for, and that's a, a lighthearted look at the dark side of Hollywood. So it's about three hours, about 70 different locations where uh, mostly terrible things happen. But since it is the history tour, we go into a bit of the history of Hollywood and we stop at the cemetery to say hello to Marilyn Monroe and Dean Martin. Uh, the Helter Skelter tour I started about seven or eight years ago devoted strictly to the Tate LaBianca murders, more famously known as the Manson murders, and that goes out on Saturday mornings. And it's a retracing the killers, uh, last, you know, their steps after the murders where they hosed off in the driveway and uh, where they threw the clothes off the cliff, as well as where uh, the victims used to live and work and hang out. So it's a, a pretty, I think, balanced story for considering it so so horrific. Uh, we offer a movie locations tour and we offer uh, we offer lots of things. We have a, a tour that we do with a couple of uh, celebrities. Al, um, Allison Arngrim from Little Lives on the Prairie hosts a tour. Uh, Bridget Marquardt from The Girls Next Door hosts a tour with us. So it's just a mishmash of all sorts of things. So there's something for everyone that likes a historical tour of Hollywood that's a little offbeat. <laughs> well yeah again it's you know Hollywood is uh, is an odd place and and we're not we're not very reverential, you know. <laughs> Although it is history and we respect the people, we will go for a cheap joke too. And I think that that's why locals like us as well, because we're not, you know, ooing and aahing over uh, somebody's hedges. But uh, this is the real deal. These are the street corners, the restaurants where they had the last suppers, where these things that we've all read about and heard about for decades, uh, where they actually happen. So it's, 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 a, it's history, but it's not like, you know, Civil War history. It's the fun kind. Exactly, and and a lot of people like history, so let's Scott, let's take a look at uh, some of the memorabilia that you have around the uh, the gallery here. How long has this gallery been open? Uh, we opened here about three and a half, almost four years ago now on Sunset Boulevard. And But all these items in the shop are things I've been collecting over the years, mostly having to do with awful events. <laughs> Although there are some nice things in here that have been uh, loaned to us, uh, you know, Marilyn Monroe's cake pan and, and uh, <laughs> telephone bill and my little friend Sadie's... Uh, costume from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, but also we have, you know, a piece of Sharon Tate's fireplace and a tile from the pool that Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones drowned in. So oh, let's let's take a look at that stuff. Go. All right, let's let's go. <laughs> and and what this is a rock from uh, the uh, the uh, Sharon Tate uh, Polanski place? That's right. Yeah, they destroyed the house in 1993. And uh, I went up there and, and uh, I call it liberated a large portion of the <laughs> oh, fireplace. Really? Wow. And, uh, and it's here because it's history. Again, I don't have millions of dollars to save a house or a restaurant or a hotel that's been torn down. But I can you know, hop a fence and grab a brick from it. And that, that way everyone can see it. it. It may be to some people it's just a lot of junk. But to me, it's more important than that. It's a piece of history. That's fantastic. What else do we have here? Well, there, there are other things like funeral flowers. This is a, me a restaurant menu from Metzaluna where Nicole Simpson had her last supper. Oh, wow. Um, this photograph of Rock Hudson standing by the bed that he died in. This, he died in 1985 in this bed. Now, this bed post that you see right there is this bed post. Right oh, wow. Here. Wow. And um, it's all sorts of things. The, uh, a piece of John Denver's airplane that disintegrated when it hit the ocean. Wow. A tile from the pool that Brian Jones drowned in, who founded the Rolling Stones in 1969. He drowned in the pool in England, and that's a piece of it. These items were wow. donated to me. These were in uh, Jean Harlow's dressing room, which she died in 1936. Wow. And one of my favorite pieces is the pink suitcase. Ah, the pink suitcase, oh. which is... Jane Mansfield. She packed oh. this the night she was killed. This was in the accident that killed her in 1967. Oh, so this was in the car. This was in the car. And there's in this little heart-shaped box, you could see, uh, that's some of the glass from the windshield. That is all that's left of the uh, heart-shaped swimming pool. There's some pink bricks from the house when they tore it down. And right below that is a lock of Manson's hair that somebody sent me recently. <laughs> wow, that's bizarre. It runs all over the place in here. But uh, yeah, upstairs, downstairs, I have Karen Carpenter's bathroom sink, a piece of the Hindenburg. 
Oh, you a piece of the Hindenburg? Yeah. <laughs> Carol Lombard's plane crash. It's all over the place in here. So uh, there's all sorts of weird things banging around here at nighttime. And this is an outfit from this is an outfit here from uh, a friend of yours who was in the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's right. Yeah, Sadie Corey. Uh, she was four foot two. Uh, she was the she was the smallest of the Transylvanians at the, at the time warp, and she and I became very good friends. I lived in England for several years, and I wrote uh, co-wrote this book about Rocky, and I became friends with a lot of people that made the movie. And Sadie was my best friend. And you know, uh, actually, uh, of course, we sh we're going to be showing this at a different time, but actually, on this day, uh, I think it's NBC is airing a reunion of the original cast of Rocky Horror yeah, I this morning. Yeah, I found that this morning, and all those people were terrific to me. Every one of them gave me a, an interview for my book, and uh, just a nice, nice group of people. I, uh, I it was an honor. I spent most of my uh, childhood with these people, or my teens, so it's a real honor to give them give them tribute when I did that. And it's been now, uh, what, uh, 50 years now, I believe. 40 for the film, and the, the, uh, the show came out 42 years ago. So, wow, wow. So we're coming up on a 50. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, this is Nice Wander and the Now Man Show with Scott Michaels from Dilly Departed Tours, and you're watching the Now Man Show. Now, you do uh, tours all year long, like... Uh, the g g g ghost tour that we offer yeah we, we we started that about a year ago and it runs all year round on saturday nights and uh it's a it's a walking tour of hollywood but instead of one of those paranormal tours where you're getting meters and things like that it's hosted by the undertaker with a big top hat and a victorian veil and cool. a candlelight candelabra walking through the streets of hollywood and uh and it's really fun it's more of a ghost and mr chicken sort of experience or or the haunted mansion sort of a thing it's just good fun they're real ghost stories and uh and, and i wouldn't hire you know somebody that that would make it annoying he's just good fun <laughs> that sounds great and uh wh what do you have to say marilyn oh <laughs> it's marilyn scarilyn monroe <laughs> <laughs> all right don't you just love it always be prepared just walking down the street now oh ah! So I write about filming locations, and I started it in November of 2007. So a ways back now, and I cover filming locations mainly in Los Angeles, but when I go on vacation to Hawaii or New York, I will write about those locations too. And there are film locations there in Hawaii too. Yep. I, I've been to some of them. Yep. When did you first get interested in finding locations? Uh, when I was little, I grew up in San Francisco, so kind mm. of I, I felt really far removed from Hollywood, but I was always obsessed with the mm -hmm. movie industry and behind the scenes. Ah, uh, the Gamble House. This is I probably know. one of the most famous locations in Pasadena, right here. Right, which it's is... famous architecturally for one thing because it's yeah. the Green and Green Brothers who designed it, but um, Doc Brown's house from Back to the Future. Yeah, we all remember yep. that, like the front door, mm -hmm. and uh, I just. Yeah. And the, the garage where his workshop was. Yes, just exactly. Next door. Yeah. All of that's right there. And only the outside was actually used in Back to the Future. The inside is another green and green house called the Blacker House, and it's also in Pasadena. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, for people that are fans of Michael Jackson, what is this? The Thriller House. Wow. The house he runs and up does into. Does it and still look thriller. like that? Yeah, this is a pretty recent picture. It's been under renovation for since I moved to LA in 2000. I mean, I wow. visited it that year and it looked like that. Wow. So yeah, it's so, still very much a haunted looking house. Did they shoot the internal, the, when, you know, the, that was in a That was all stage. on a sound stage. So yeah. it was only the exterior. Wow. But you see him, he runs up the steps and she, run, she runs up scared of the zombie oh, Michael right, and then he right. follows her with all the zombies. That's fantastic. And what is this? This is where they filmed the, the zombie dance in Thriller. Wow. Uh, it's That's a, fantastic. Yeah, and it, we can still you can still go there today and and it, see, and and isn't the side of the wall there yeah, still visible in the, in the video? It's exactly that, the, that, wow. the same. I mean, yeah. nothing has changed. It's frozen in wow. time. It's so and that's exciting. In Boyle Heights. Right? Yeah. Wow. Cool. It's just in kind of like an industrial warehouse area. Yeah. And when I went, I was of course you know recreating. Yeah, yeah, of course, all the moves. of course. Who wouldn't? How do can that, you right? not? And all the workers, they had like no clue that. They're somewhere historic, oh, wow. and they're looking That's at hilarious. us like, what are you doing? Wow. It's like Thriller was shot here. Wow. Yeah.
Hi, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. That's my hometown, know what I'm talking about, you know. Oh, what a crazy world we live in. I don't have to go into detail about that, right? There's so much craziness going on right now. But you know what? People say, hey, hey, no, look at the bright side. You know, people have they had their boats lifted. I mean, the quality of life, look at the technology, everything is so easy. I'm like, yeah, progress, progress. But do you realize the progress that we have created has done a couple of things that never happened before. We can now destroy everything on the surface of this planet in a very short period of time. And also, we've polluted waterways, the land, and the air like never before. Yeah, progress. Okay. Oh, but you know, I, I do get scared sometimes. You, you, you guys get scared? Yeah. Things yeah. scare you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I get scared sometimes when I'm on the stage and I hear boo. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what really scares me? What really scares me? Stupid people scares the crap out of me! <laughs> okay, I had to get that out of my system. Hello, this is Nice Wonder. I'm here on uh, Hollywood Boulevard, uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, as some people call it. Thank you. And uh, I have to be here on this location to tell you a story and also to tell you about an, uh, a film coming out called Bohemian Rhapsody. And it stars uh, Rami Malik as lead singer Freddie Mercury of the band. Queen, you can see. I mean, see if I can turn around here and you can get a better look at it. Oh, there it is. Queen. Uh, the movie tells the story uh, of the music of Queen, as and primarily uh, Freddie Mercury, and it has screened uh, as previews so far, and I've heard nothing but great things about it. And looking forward to that released on November the 2nd and the interesting thing about Hollywood Boulevard is that uh, up and down Hollywood Boulevard and Vine Street um, there's just one star after another it's been here since the 1950s and been building more and more and more of these individual ceremonies as time goes on each and every one of these stars represents a ceremony. I personally saw two. Uh, one for David Bowie in 1997, a little bit further down the street here, closer to Highland. And I saw him and Iman, who were present for that. It was a great day. And also I saw Jeff Lynne of Electric Light, or Electric Light Orchestra get his star, I believe, in 2015. Uh, and he was there with... Um, Tom Petty and um, Joe Walsh, who uh, gave him um, special uh, tributes during the ceremony. I saw in the audience uh, Danny and Olivia Harrison, uh, wife and, and uh, son of uh, Beatle George Harrison. And I know there were a few other people too, I can't remember. Um, but it was a great day, so I've seen how those ceremonies work and they're a lot of fun. So that means at some point, Queen was here, probably also the whole band, probably Freddie Mercury, uh, Brian May, Roger Taylor, and John Deacon, the bass player, on this spot. And it was probably a magical day, and I don't know what year that was, but um, I didn't make it. <laughs> I would have loved to have been here. I also wanted to talk about uh, Rami Malik, uh, and uh, right here, he's a. Uh, also the star of the TV show called um, Mr. Robot. And it's going to be ending in its fourth season here in 2018. He uh, announced on the Jimmy Kimmel show, again, Jimmy Kimmel, right down the street, this way, closer to Highland is where he does, Jimmy Kimmel does his show. And he announced officially that the fourth season in 2018 is the final season for uh, the great uh, highly acclaimed Mr. Robot show. If you haven't seen that on USA Network, you can also find it online. It's a great, great show that puts together fictitious, a fictitious storyline with some real-time uh, things going on currently in society 
It addresses uh, income inequality, technology, surveillance, uh, all kinds of relevant issues in a very interesting way. A lot of interesting plot twists and characters, great script, great music soundtrack, including the electronic uh, theme song of uh, Matt Quayle, plus music from you know, all eras, all the way back to Beethoven, jazz, R&P, um, classic rock, um, 80s rock, uh, modern alternative rock, um, hip, hip hop and rap, and, uh, there's all kinds of great stuff. Anyway, I, such a well-produced show, highly recommend it, Mr. Robot, starring, again, Rami Malek, who's also the star of the upcoming Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie about Queen, coming out in theaters, and this is Nice Winter at the Queen Star on Hollywood Boulevard. Here at uh, the Doodah Parade. Hello, this is Nice Wander. I hope you're having a great time. We are. This is hilarious. It's a lot of fun. Great people. So what do we got now? Oh, it's the Mystery Lady. How are you? Welcome uh, <laughs> to Oh, I see. And now here's a guy that has been in the Doodah Parade for 25 years now. Senor Gracho, Viva Duda! Ah, here comes the wonderful roller derby girls. Hello, girls. All right. All right. <laughs> the queen, bro. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Good to see you. It's Count Smokula and Swami from El Monte over here. Hey, this is Howdy Krishna on the Now Man hey, Show. Howdy to you. Yeah. Howdy. And Oklahoma is going to go all the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the 25th year of Americans with Disabilities Act, that is awesome. And you know, all of this wouldn't have happened had it not been for over 100 bills in the 1930s and 40s that we now call the New Deal. And we do like the New Deal. World Champion Whistler, Carol Ann Kaufman, the Whistling Diva. How are you? Let's talk about income inequality. What do you have to say about that? Bernie, you have a lot to say about that, right? Yes, I do. I think income inequality, when, when the top 1% of the top 10% of the top 1% of the top 10% of the top 1% of the top 10% controls a smaller percentage of the wealth than all the combined, I don't think that's fair. I think we need to change those percentages to simple fractions. Excuse and if I were president, me. I would do that. Excuse me. Excuse me. There's no economic inequality. I've got a lot of money and I'm very comfortable. And I think people who are poor, they can work for me. And if they don't work for me, then we'll ship them out of the country. But the point is, we're going to have jobs. We're going to have so many jobs. Jobs is in the Bible. There's the book of job. It's right there. It's all you need to know.